Hello and welcome, you're watching The Mint, I'm Abhishek Singh. Have you heard of the Matthew effect? Maybe not, unless you're a Bible aficionado or a sociology major. But I'm certain you must have heard of some version of a particular gospel of Matthew chapter 13 verse 12. I know who I sound like, but little choice do I have in the matter. I could not have come up with a better one-liner to aptly introduce what we're going to talk to you about today. So back to Gospel of Matthew, chapter 13, verse 12, from King James Bible. For whosoever hath, to him shall be given, and he shall have more abundance. But whosoever hath not, from him shall be taken away, even that he hath. And that's exactly what we are talking about today. How those who have were given 120% more on an average. India's super rich. Rise of wealth among India's billionaires in the last few years has been mind-boggling. On an average, Indian billionaires increase their wealth by 120%, while the bottom 50% continue to battle inflation and saw their wealth depreciate during the exact same period. An obvious question this gives rise to is if India should consider taxing its super rich. But more on that later. Oxfam recently published a report called Survival of the Richest on the opening day of World Economic Forum in Davos, Switzerland. The report makes more such shocking claims. It goes on to say that the richest 1% of the country own more than 40% of India's total wealth, whereas the bottom 50% or 70 crore people own just 3% of India's total wealth. Furthermore, just 21 billionaires have more wealth than the bottom 50% or 70 crore people. One cursory glance at the report and it becomes abundantly clear that the rich are just too rich and continue to get richer at a mind-boggling rate, whereas those who have not continue to lose more of whatever little they may have. But is this the case just with India? No. The situation globally is not much different. Let me quote a piece of statistic I found particularly disturbing. The richest 1% grabbed nearly two-thirds of all new wealth worth over $42 trillion created since 2020 almost twice as much money as the bottom 99% of the world's population. Here's what Gabriela Booker, executive director of Oxfam International, had to say on the findings of the report, and I quote, Taxing the super-rich and big corporations is the door out of today's overlapping crisis. It's time we demolish the convenient myth that tax cuts for the richest result in their wealth somehow trickling down to everyone else. 40 years of tax cuts for the super-rich have shown that a rising tide doesn't lift all ships, just the super yachts. Oxfam is calling on governments to introduce one-off solidarity wealth taxes and windfall taxes to end crisis profiteering. Permanently increase taxes on the richest 1% and tax the wealth of the richest 1% at rates high enough to significantly reduce the numbers and wealth of the richest people and redistribute these resources. This includes implementing inheritance, property, and land taxes, as well as net wealth taxes. The survey goes on to claim several other things, some of which don't quite make sense. For instance, here's what a Twitter user had to say about the claim that the bottom 50% of India pays 64.3% of GST, something that's mathematically impossible. Because the survey further says that the bottom 50% pays 6.7% of their income as GST which translates to 64.3% of the total GST. Like Deva Jain here pointed out, a mathematical impossibility. Let's discuss it another day with an expert. Thank you for watching and don't forget to like and share the video. Please do subscribe to The Mint.